resumes, a single document that holds so much weight. It is who you are professionally at a glance, and it is up to you to tailor it to showcase who you are as a person and why you are the best candidate for the role. I've seen many resumes in the past where some were extremely long, and I'm talking about more than two pages. And some resumes I've seen barely had anything on it. So what is considered a good resume? And should your resume be one, two, three pages? What do you put on your resume? And how do you tailor your resume to fit a job description? Let's talk about it. It is true that not all resumes are created equal. There are some that are just way too long and nobody's going to be looking at it. I'm sorry. This also applies to those resumes that barely have anything on them. Nothing gets tossed aside quicker than seeing a couple lines and a bunch of spaces just to fill in the gap. Yeah, don't do that. The sweet spot that I've noticed for employers is that they're looking for resumes that are less than or equal to two pages. For me personally, my resume is two pages. The second page highlights all of my certifications, whereas the first page has all of the juicy details explaining why I should be making a six figure salary right out of high school. You're guaranteed to get a six figure salary right out of high school. I'm not saying that my resume is the best resume ever and that you should follow it to the T, but I thought, hey, since this is working for me, maybe I should share my resume template with you. That way, maybe you can get an idea as to how to build a resume, especially if you haven't done one before. So we'll start from the top. You'll have your name in big bold letters along with where you currently reside because it is important to let the employer know if you live near the area or not. And of course, include your contact details such as your phone number and your email address. Right away, you'll jump into the summary of qualifications. In other words, why should the employer care or what makes you qualified for the job? You wanna to try to add about five to 10 qualifications as to why you are qualified for the role that you're applying to. This would mainly include soft skills and maybe two to three technical skills. Next, we'll jump into areas of expertise. This section, you need to be careful because whatever you put in here, you must be able to back it up. For example, if you throw in Splunk, you better be ready to talk about Splunk. Break these down into their own category. And as you can see, I mentioned SIM. So you could add, for example, network analysis and put in Wireshark, TCP dump, Zeek. But again, be ready to talk about those. We then dive into education. Not much here, simply what did you major in and was it a degree or a diploma or something else? And where did you go for school and when did you graduate? Next is work experiences. And this is where most of the meat is. You want to try and aim for at least three to five relevant work experiences and try to tailor each job that you've ever been in to match closely to what the role you're applying for is expecting. For example, if the role mentions anything about firewalls, definitely put down something related to firewalls, if that is one of your responsibilities, of course. Let's say you don't have any work experiences. You could always mention that you've implemented PFSense in your home lab and set that up with custom rules to restrict access. Now, of course, you will have to do this so that way you can talk about it. The main thing here is to try and make sure you add in as much relevant experience related to the role that you're applying to. And again, if you don't have any work experience, you can always put in your hands-on experience. If you fall into the group with many work experiences, I would suggest you only display your last five jobs. Any more than that can make your resume extremely long. The goal here is to make it less than or equal to two pages. Next, we go into certifications. This is where you want to list out all of your certificates that you've obtained and when did you obtain it. Then we'll go into websites. If you watch my previous videos, I preached about making a blog post and this is where you will list your blog. You would want to provide a brief description of your blog so the person looking at your resume knows what to expect. And the last one, trainings. If you could help it, I would suggest you not put this on your resume, but it is there as a filler for those that barely have anything on their resume. You could at least put in what you are enrolled in or training for. Do keep in mind that this 100% has to be relevant to the role that you're applying to. It doesn't make sense that you're training for a marathon when you're applying for a cybersecurity position. That is my resume template that I've been using throughout my entire career. Do you have to follow it completely? 
Definitely not. But it is here for you if you want to reference it or use it as a starting block. You can download my resume template for free and I'll leave the link down below. Remember that the sweet spot for employers tend to be less than or equal to two pages. If you can keep your resume to one page, even better, but try not to exceed more than two pages. And that is it for the video. If you found it informative, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Stay curious and do things differently.